so right at the top, um, inscribed angle, I'm going to draw this. This was on a vocabulary thing at the beginning of the chapter. So an inscribed angle goes all the way across the circle. So it would be like this. If I can get my pen to work, that'd be good. Okay, so from here to here. So this would be an inscribed angle. Goes all the way across. And then the other word that you need to know is intercepted arc. So this right here is the intercepted arc. Okay, so as far as the math goes with these inscribed angles, it's pretty simple. You may have figured it out on Khan Academy already, but when you have an inscribed angle that goes all the way across, um, this angle measure, if it was 20, let's say we're given that this angle measure is 20 degrees, then the arc measure is double that. So the arc would be 40 degrees. And vice versa. If you were given the arc and then asked for the angle measure, you would divide by two to get the angle measure. Okay, so now we're going to apply that to the problems. It starts off really simple, but they bring in some of the other concepts we've learned throughout the chapter. So for number one, it says find the measure of angle A. So it's looking for the measure of this angle right here. It shows that the arc is 84 which is double that angle. So we would do 84 divided by two to get that angle measure of 42 degrees. So measure of angle A is 42 degrees. Okay. Number two, find the measure of angle G. So this angle right here, um, but they don't give us the arc, so we can't like divide that by two to get the angle. Um, but they do give us these two arcs. Now you know the arcs around the circle add to 360, so we're just gonna solve for this arc and then divide by two. So we'll do 360 minus 70 minus 120 to get this arc measure. So that would come out to 170 degrees. So that's this, like just this part. And then to get the angle measure, we divide that by 2. So 170 divided by 2 gives us 85. So we got 85 right here. Measure of angle G equals 85. Okay, next. Number three. As you know, they're going to keep bringing in slightly different situations. It wants to know the measure of angle N, so this angle right here. They show this time a diameter across the circle. You know it's a diameter because it goes across and it hits the center, so that's the diameter. Um, on this side of the circle, these two arcs would add to 180. Um, so we could figure out this arc and then divide it by two to get that angle. So we have 160, 180 minus 160 would be 20 degrees. So this arc right here is 20 degrees. And then you can divide that by 2 to get the measure of angle N. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So the measure of angle N is 10 degrees. Number 4, what are we working with here? Um, now it's asking for the arc measure, RS. So it goes back to the basics again. It shows us the inner inscribed angle measure is 67. So we can just multiply that by 2 to get this arc and that comes out to 134 degrees. Okay, next. They tell us that arc V, or they want to know the measure of arc V right here. Um, the inscribed angle's over here though. So let's see what we're working with. We have a diameter, that's cool. Um, we can take this angle, multiply it by two to get this arc. So 30 times two would be 60, so this arc is 60. And then because this is a diameter, these two arcs would add to 180. So 180 minus 60 would give us 120, and it would be 120 degrees. Okay, wants to know the measure of Wx. So we're told this is 110, 
we can solve for this arc and then figure out this part. So 75 times two would be 150 degrees. And then we can figure this out. Let me make a note, 75 times two is how I got that number. Okay, then 360 minus 150 minus 110 gives us this arc. And it comes out to 100 degrees. So WX, 100 degrees. Okay, number seven. Okay, so you were supposed to write this down. If two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, the angles are congruent. Somebody said that don't make no sense. I'm gonna make it make sense. <laughs> okay, so number, <laughs> number seven, it looks like two triangles, and it is, um, but I want you to look at it as two angles. So there's an angle here, And there's an angle right here. And these two angles have the same intercepted arc, right her. Mm -hmm. Sorry, okay. Um, so, if you were to find that arc from this pink inscribed angle, you would multiply this by two to get 102. Well, if you went from this arc to this angle, you would have to divide by two to get 51. So, um, when two angles have the same intercepted arc, they have the same measure. So the measure of angle EHF equals 51 degrees. The next one, same idea. Um, they want to know the measure of arc PS. We have an angle here. And then we have another angle here with the same intercepted arc. Um, this one actually doesn't require as much work or thinking. Let's see. So here we have an inscribed angle. It's 40 degrees. The intercepted arc is right here. We can just multiply 40 by 2 to get 80. So we're doing 40 times 2 equals 80. That's how we get that. You draw a circle. I had you draw a circle right here. I wanted to show you one more type of problem that is on the homework, and you've also been seeing it on Khan Academy. Um, some of you, I'm sure, were able to figure it out. Some of you um, may not have, but once I explain it, it's going to seem really simple. So here we're going to have two points. Um, from that point, we'll have a central angle, so an angle to the center of the circle. And then we will have an inscribed angle that goes all the way across. Okay, so on Khan Academy, sometimes they tell, or one of the lessons, they tell you, okay, this inscribed angle is 30 degrees, and they ask, what is this central angle right here? Well, um, from the inscribed to the arc, you would multiply by two to get 60 degrees. Um, and then the central angle is the same as that 60 degrees, so it would just be 60. So that's how you do that problem. So now we're going to move over to polygons, inscribed polygons. Here's the gist with inscribed polygons. Um, opposite angles of an inscribed polygon are supplementary, of a, of a quadrilateral are supplementary. So um, in this case, Opposite would be like x degrees and 80 degrees. We can do x plus 80 equals 180 and solve for x. So x equals 100. Then for y, same idea. The opposite angles are supplementary. So 95 plus y equals 180. While we're on quadrilaterals, we're actually going to move down to this one. Um, but this one, we're going to use a little bit of a different method to solve. OK. Um, so first of all, we have some inscribed angles. And we can use this inscribed angle to solve for A. 
So essentially two, three A's would equal this arc right here. Um, we don't know that whole arc yet though, so we have to solve for it. It shows three of the arcs, we just need to solve for the fourth. So I'm gonna do 360 minus these numbers to get the arc here. Minus 54, minus 130, minus 110 to see what's left over, and it is 66. So this measure right here is 66 degrees. Whoa, it's blurry. Okay, now that I have that, I can figure out A. Two of these inscribed angles would equal this arc measure. So two, three A's equals 54 plus 66. because this is half of that arc. So two of these would equal that. Or you could set it up this plus this divided by two equals three A, that would work too. Okay, and then for B, we're gonna do the same idea. Let's look at where that inscribed angle lands. I'm gonna use a different color to kind of highlight it. Um, okay, so for four B, our inscribed angle is rot here, and then this would be the intercepted arc. So two four Bs equals this whole thing. So two four Bs equals 66 plus 110. They're writing down. So over here, um, it says inscribe triangles Maybe triangles, I guess I should have pluralized that. Inscribed, inscribed triangles where the hypotenuse is the diameter of a circle makes a right triangle. What that means is if you have a circle um, and you have an inscribed triangle, let me draw it, where the hypotenuse of that triangle is the diameter of the circle, then that triangle is a right triangle. And then from there, you could use trigonometry, you could use Pythagorean theorem, um, or whatever you need to use to solve for dimensions in that triangle. Okay, so here we have number 10. Um, shows us one of the angles and it wants us to solve for the other two. Well, since we have a semicircle here, this is like the diameter of a circle, so this would be a right triangle and y equals 90 degrees. And then to solve for the last angle, you could do 180 minus 27 minus 90 equals 63. So x equals 63. And 12, we're just applying that same idea. It shows a triangle. It shows that the hypotenuse is the diameter of a circle. Um, so then there, these three angles would add up to 180. We also know that this is a right angle. So 3x equals 90 and x equals 30. And then for 2y, we can say, okay, 34 plus 90 plus 2y equals 180 and we can solve for y. y equals 28. Okay, so that is all the practice problems. Um, when you get on the homework, if you have any trouble or you don't see it or you need help setting up a problem, just let me know. Um, you can get a laptop, get started on it, 